back at cleaning these parts and I was using the wire wheel cup because I was able to get some of these spots like I get in really close around here and clean these edges up which I can't do with the bristle disc and I was able to clean a lot more of this up but I still can't get in there I'm going to have to get a really small uh, wire brush on a die grinder and do that but then I did this piece I did this whole piece with the wire brush and then I said, oh, this is a nice flat area. I'll grab the bristle disc again. I just did this area here, and I just wanted to show the difference. How much more this takes off. Well, the memory filled up on the other camera. Basically, I finished using the uh, bristle disc where I could and then used the uh, wire cup to get into some of the tighter spots. And I still have a couple of spots on that gearbox there that I've got to get and that piece there. And then I didn't even get started on those pieces there. And it's starting to get dark again. Um, and then I also I was blowing out the inside of this thing when some grease splattered out on me and I realized I never really did a good job of cleaning the interior of that gearbox so I used my 3M foaming, foaming engine degreaser and gave that a really good cleaning on the inside. Problem is now it's damp and the problem is by the time it dries uh, if I leave it out here it'll probably give me flash rust problems so I think what I might do is I might uh, maybe I'll take the uh, propane torch and just heat that up try and drive some of that moisture out of the castings uh, the porous casting well instead of using torch I decided to uh, use compressed air to get the uh, heavy stuff out and now I'm just using my heat gun I got it locked and uh, I'll just come back in a little while and see if it's bursted into flames. The heat gun, that is. Alright, I had to leave for a few minutes. And when I walked over here, coming back, I could smell the heat coming off of that, or whatever it's burning off on there. Yeah, it stinks. Pretty good job, it's bone dry. Ooh, so the other last night I was out here and it started to get a little bit dark, but the bigger problem was the mosquitoes found me. Didn't take long before uh, it felt like there was a swarm of mosquitoes on me. And I didn't really feel like putting on mosquito repellent only because I knew I wasn't gonna be out here very long, so I uh, didn't stick around very long before I bailed. But I was able to get some of these parts 
primed. And I gotta get the other side of this. Primer is quick drying, so I'm going to hit the other side of this gearbox so I can paint that gearbox today and the, the gearbox cover and the drive shaft tube. A couple other little components here and there. As hot as it is today, it'll take no time at all for that to dry. Uh, last time I was down here talking about these bearings I had picked up um, to fix the SIP drill press, I didn't have this invoice with me and I just wanted to uh, mention that uh, the uh, company that I got these bearings from is uh, Bearing Specialty Company Incorporated. Uh, they're at 61 Milton Street in Worcester, Mass. It's right in central Massachusetts. and. Um, uh, Dan Locatus is the salesman who helped me out, and there's also uh, the other gentleman, I think his name is Scotty, I forgot his last name, which I don't think I got his last name. Anyways, I just want to mention how great these guys are, they're really helpful, um, you know, they're probably used to dealing with a lot of um, bigger companies and bigger orders and things like that, and for them to take time out to uh, help me research and find what I need to get this drill press up and running cheap. Uh, it was really great. This was including tax. It only ran me $17.32 because I did specify I wanted cheap bearings because I knew I wasn't going to put a ton of... Uh, it's not like I'm going to put this drill into a production service shop. So anyways, to recap, I got these three bearings that go in the gearbox. These are sealed. Um, the old bearings, I think I had already gone over this, but they sound really bad. Um, anyways, they normally would have oil going through there that's in that gearbox. But my plan is I'm going to use these new sealed bearings. I am going to still have some oil in the gearbox, but not as much as um, originally was probably in there. I'm going to have just enough. Uh, let me see. Let me get that real quick and explain to you what I plan on doing. Okay, so this is that uh, yoke assembly or bracket assembly for the uh, for the bearings to sit in. So these bearings are going to sit in here and here and then there's a third outboard one. But anyways, normally that's in that box and normally you want to have enough oil in there so that these bearings probably want to have oil up to, you know, I don't know, halfway maybe or so or maybe even I don't know if you'd want them completely submerged in the oil bath but since these are sealed bearings I don't have to worry about the bearings so then the question is do I need to have oil in there at all and I'm thinking I do want oil in there only for the purpose of keeping these teeth uh, some lubrication on these teeth so what's going to end up happening is of course one of these bevel gears sits in here like this and then the other, other bevel gear, the pinion, is going to sit up here, like this. So, what I'm thinking is, as long as I've got oil part way up this gear, what will happen is, as this gear rotates through the oil bath, it'll take the oil with it and bring it up and transfer oil onto that other gear. That looks like by design was the intention because I'm going to relocate the camera if you look right in here there's a cup and I think what happens is as that pinion gear is spinning it slings off oil that runs down the inside into this cup and then it runs through a hole down inside there that you can't really see and that actually lubricates the shaft as it runs through here so they're supporting the shaft on this side with bearings but then they're just letting the shaft this end of the shaft kind of sit there and run in this this casting there isn't even a there isn't even a bushing in there 
the best that these guys could come up with when they designed this was to have a groove right here. That groove runs down to where that hole is. So what happens is the oil runs down here in, in this cup, runs through that hole, runs along that groove, and that's what keeps that shaft lubricated. 